quick rundown of the things that I'm going to be using to make this uh, video and to construct this 8 foot by 3 foot enclosure for one of my reticulated pythons. I love these screws. Uh, 2 inches is more than enough. Uh, the length is more than enough. You really don't need more than that. I also have a drill bit there because I pre-drill the holes. Corner brackets for, um, they're, not, they're not brackets, they are corner clamps. A um, few brackets. Uh, Harbor Freight Tools Skill Saw, which I'm only going to use for the sides. I had all my wood pre-cut at Home Depot. I just take in my measurements and I'll give you those. Uh, roto zip saw because I'm going to be drilling a hole for the vent and I'm using this as a vent. It's actually a floor vent, heater vent. And the reason I use this type is because if you run your fingers across it, it's not sharp at any way, at, at any point. And it also has where I can seal here. Here I can seal if there's too much airflow, if too much, if it's too cold, I can adjust it and completely close it off if I want to. Um, I have uh, two sheets of plexiglass. It's a quarter inch. For each piece is four feet by 16 inches. I will show you how to make the sliding glass unit. So a lot of people are wondering, how do you get sliding glass doors? How do I get them where I can take them off and on? That's, I'm going to cover that. A uh, simple lock. You can pick this one up on Amazon. Uh, you can pick them up at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're about four or five bucks. And this is... All together, you see it all cut out, but it is three sheets of four by eight plywood. And the plywood is a half inch thick. I use this one. It's very, the measurements right now, you see the, the thicker pieces there. Those are eight foot by three foot exactly. Here's two sides. This is cut from another sheet. Um, these are 17 inches uh, in width, eight foot, eight foot in length. One of them is going to be cut down to... Uh, 17 inches by three feet for the sides and the remaining pieces here these are going to be used to create and construct the sliding glass area and as well as a faceplate so I'm gonna to get to that and hopefully by watching this video you'll be able to create your own enclosure and change the dim dimensions as you would like but for those people that always wonder how to get an enclosure made or how to make one, I mean, it's kind of pricey. It's pretty pricey. And I can build an eight foot by three foot for roughly $200, which is a lot better than spending a thousand dollars. And this will last you and it will be waterproof and you'll see that at the end of it. Um, so let's dig into that. All righty. All right, so I've measured the two side pieces and then they're cut out. One's there, one is, sorry, I'm still using this gimbal here. One right over there. And so now I've put the clamps here. I'm gonna slide this piece of wood right in there in between this and it'll hold it in place. I've used a bead of liquid nail. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, it should be nice and thin and not so blobby, but I just opened this tube and my pressure and squeezing the trigger wasn't very uh, consistent so a little mess there most of the screws screw boxes come with the little uh the little drive and if you can see this and hopefully the camera picks it up it goes perfectly into those there so you don't have to really worry about which you're going to use and where you have to get it already comes with it so i'm gonna go ahead and attach this piece and uh, put a couple screws in there You'll do the same for the other side. You want to apply, go ahead and um, slightly tighten this one. Once you get this one nice and tight, then you can go ahead and adjust this back and forth until these two edges come together. When these two edges come together, then you want to tighten this one. So what I'm going to do at the moment, now that this one is set in place, I'm going to loosen these so I can slide this piece of wood out, add the liquid nail bead, set this back in, squeeze it as tight as I can together, tighten this back up, and then I'm going to seal it with the screws. Of course, I uh, pre-drill all my holes, and then I just go ahead and make sure that when I drill this in, I make sure, I sink, I make sure the head goes in just a little bit, just below the surface. That way I can go ahead and cover these holes up. 
and uh, it'll give it a nice finish when you go ahead and uh, paint this and coat it up. If you can get your liquid nail bead to look a little bit more like this, it's a lot better than the other one that you previously saw. Um, this will just help hold those pieces of wood together and uh, makes the whole enclosure a lot more sturdier. Turn the, the lower part of this cage on its side. And you can see there I pre-drilled one hole. That's the first screw on the bottom. And I have another screw up here on the top already holding it together. It kind of helps it, you know, it um, strengthens it while I place it on its side and make sure that these edges are perfectly lined while I drill the rest of the holes in. So, all right, let me add some more screws in here. All right, so I can't stress enough that you pre-drill all the holes. It makes it very easy to just allow these screws to go in without splitting this wood because it is plywood. It will split if the screw decides to go anyway. Um, if you try to use a three inch screw, it might work, but you're also chancing. I mean, the longer the screw, the further it has to travel and the greater the chance it's gonna go to the side. All right. So I got both sides up, left side, right side. Now this piece laying across here diagonally is the back part. It's also 17 inches by eight feet. But you also have to account for the fact that these boards, these plywood pieces are three quarters of an inch thick. So what I'm gonna do is if you add these two together like this, this is just the, the remaining piece off of this eight foot board. You can tell by measuring them that it's an inch and a half. And I'm gonna take that inch and a half. Oh, come on, go the other way. I'm gonna take that inch and a half. Oh, this is upside down on top of that. Inch and a half. All right, we're gonna take that inch and a half right off the end of this one so that it slides in there snugly. As a rule of thumb, when anytime you're doing woodworking, measure twice, cut once. I had to measure three times. Yeah. I don't know how this one got off like that, but don't do that. Just make sure you measure twice, measure three times if you have to cut once. You're going to ruin your whole project. I'm actually attaching the back piece. What I've done is I've used these clamps. These clamps will really help you. Um, like $20, $25 at Home Depot, maybe Lowe's. I haven't checked Lowe's. Uh, I think it's like seven, eight dollars at Harbor Freight Tools. It's really cheap, very inexpensive, and it really helps a lot. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a bead on the inside of liquid nail, and then I'm gonna go ahead and join this together. As you do this, you wanna go ahead and screw this, and then kinda like iron it out. You wanna like hold the wood, because this plywood is not always going to, most wood, if you've worked with wood, you understand that it you buy wood like at Home Depot or some of these places, it's kind of moist and it will bow and bend and you're going to try to iron it out by holding it, bracing it, and screwing it. And you want to go ahead and just put two ends, hold your corners together, push the center out when, as you can, and then start drilling those. If you see back here, you can see like a little lip. And I'm going to have to push this out as I'm screwing the bottom because I'm only doing the sides right now. The bottom's going to bow out because the top the, the the center up from top is bowed out a little bit concave you want to say um so i'm going to go ahead and iron this out you want to just try to make this look i mean i mean people put do all kinds of cages it's all right you just want to have something that you're going to be happy with you're going to be pleased with your animal's going to be happy to live in you don't want your snake looking at you like someone get me the hell out of here you know what i mean so um you see those gaps right there at the bottom those are going to iron out as soon as i start adding the screws they'll come together i'm going to use this silicone here uh to go ahead and seal every corner that is on here i already started that so i'm gonna go around all the edges and seal this because since this is 17 inches the back is 17 inches it'll overall be 17 inches high uh, it's going to be very hard to get in there after the fact that I put the top on. I tried it. I've done it before. It's a pain. But... All right. So what I'm going to be working on next, I'm going to go start constructing the 
sliding glass mechanism, what's going to give, hold your sliding glass door and allow you to take it in and out. And what we're going to use is we're going to use one of these 8 foot by 12 foot sections, which is really one of the, the pieces that we cut off the 8 by 4 foot board. Um, and we're going to use this scrap piece. We're going to take about an inch and a half off of it here. And we're going to take an inch and a half off the side. We're taking an inch and a half off the side because you need it to fit between the two side pieces. Um, everything inside here from this point on is going to be 94.5 inches. You're only going to use two pieces, one for the bottom, one for the top. That's what your glass is going to lay against when it's inside. You also, are, we're going to, I'm going to make it an inch and a half. That way if it's a half off of this, and this is going to be the bottom portion. Um, if you are using, if you could use a table saw, it would be great. If you just have the skill saw to use, I'm going to pick this one up for a gu There's a guide here, and this guide slides in and out. You adjust it to the blade length, to the blade length from the distance that you're cutting. Tighten it up and you use that. But I really suggest not using that because it's kind of thin and it'll snag, and your your cuts won't be as straight as you want it to be. The best thing to do is to measure an inch and a half all the way down. Use a straight edge of another board to make that line draw it out and then you're going to have to use that same board or another board clamp it down so that your guide and the blade plus the distance of what you're cutting if you say this is an inch and a half between the blade and the end of the guide and you're cutting an inch and a half then you want to go ahead and put that blade that's yeah, really hard to explain I'd have to show you how to do it and it's a pain in the ass the um, best thing I do is try to figure that on YouTube because that's going to take a lot of time to figure that and explain that. Alright, so I got the piece all cut. It's an inch and a half in height and 94.5 inches in width or length. Alright, so I would not suggest adding a screw here from this side this way because this, this will split. Most likely, even if you pre-drill it, I mean, you'd have to use like a good drill, a good, a bigger size drill bit in order to get it to work correctly. But all this distance here is, this is basically a little bit more than a half inch because the glass is a quarter inch thick. So two of those is half an inch. So it's just a little over so that the glass will be able to slide in here. I've added a bead of liquid nail very very thin i'm trying not to get spill on this side like i did here i don't know if you can see that if the camera's picking it up very well and i've used this to clamp it down so that it is exactly the same length all the way or the same distance from the edge all the way across so i'm going to add the screws i'm going to actually add them from the bottom and i'm going to since the liquid nail is also going to hold in i'm going to probably place one about every 12 inches all the way down weird angle but from the bottom. Yeah. So that little split right there, that's even too close to the to the edge from the bottom. So you gotta keep it in in more so that you kinda avoid those things. It's not too bad. I'm gonna add all that some glued here and I'll clamp it together and it'll be just fine, but just so that you have an idea. This is an option, you don't have to do this, but if you wanna really have a good nice water tight barrier um, this is called poly wall it's used in like uh, showers and, and it's to keep um, basically a resistance protecting barrier um, to protect against moisture and any kind of abuse or anything and you know when these um, animals they go they go it's gonna just soak into your wood even if you if you if you coat it really well it'll last you a long time but not only am I going to coat it, but I'm going to add this on here as an extra precaution so that I don't get anything else. I'm going to add an adhesive on the bottom. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put this on top of that. I'm going to add a few staples and then I'm going to seal over those staples in order to ensure that it's actually sealed down to the bottom. And uh, we will see the finished product in a second. It's really easy to cut. You can cut it with scissors. It's, it's not really thick and it's uh, heat resistant and it's um, made from... Uh, I think it's made of, no, it's recyclable. It's recycled. Anyways, um, should be 100% safe for your animals. Um, I mean, hey, if plastic tubs 
are okay for our animals, then this is definitely going to be okay for your animals. I know people have all kinds of weird ideas. Now, on the other hand, if you're using those black, those plastic turkey bags that you use to put your turkey for Thanksgiving, that gives off some toxins that will kill most of your birds in your house if you have birds. But yeah, that's a little toxic for your animals. All right, so that's what it kind of looks like with uh, the wall down, the poly wall installed. Siliconed all the way around, it's siliconed underneath. Um, all the staples that I used to iron it down are also siliconed over. This one's kind of a clear type, clear kind of white silicone. You can barely see them post. Let me see. So nothing's gained below that. Right, so I've laid the top on there. Um, it's just on there. It's not actually screwed in or anything yet. I have to go ahead and add some liquid nail to seal this up. And then I'm going to go around and drill and add the top on. Let me just add, um, make sure you use these corner brackets. You're going to want this, these edges all to be flush because if they're not, when you go to add the face plate, you're going to have weird gaps in there and that's really going to suck. So just make sure that you go ahead and add these in here before you start screwing these in and make sure that if anything, because sometimes you're going to cut wood and it's just not going to be exactly the way you planned it. But this up here in the front, you want this to be absolutely perfect. All right, so what I'm going to do is I, I measured the distance, uh, which is a little over half an inch from here. And we'll go ahead and clamp this down using this as a guide and pushing this into the depth. And then I'm going to clamp it down all the way across until I get this where I want it. This is going to be the top part of the sliding glass mechanism. All right, so I got the top part on and well, the top part of the sliding glass. And let me give you just a demonstration really quick. It'll fit in there very nicely without it being able to fall in or fall out. It still has an area where when the faceplate comes on, it'll slide nicely. And, oops, in between here. Oh, please tell me I didn't get messed up. Okay. That's why plexiglass. That's why I prefer plexiglass. Because uh, if that was glass, that would have sucked ass right now. But, yeah, coming along nicely. So what I've done here is I've flipped the cage uh, upside down. So this is actually the ceiling. The poly wall flooring is on the top. This is going to allow me to uh, go ahead and seal all the edges a lot easier because one of the reasons I, I, the deepest I make my cages most of the time is 30 inches, but three feet. Reason being, if my arm is right here and it's at the end of it, I mean, it's going to be really hard to reach back there and grab an animal unless you have a hook and you're going to drag them all the way out. Or even if you have to get back there, you have to climb inside this. But... Either way, I flipped it upside down to make it easier to seal and paint. And so the next time you see this, you'll see it a different color. I mean, go ahead and paint yours whatever color you want to do it. I use um, non-toxic, uh, non-VOC paints. Uh, you can find them in a variety of, uh, well, have them made to whatever color you want at Home Depot or, or Lowe's. So, all righty. You see how these screws, um, they go in pretty nicely. Uh, so you can put it over this and make a little uh, divot here. Um, I added this 17 inch, it's, uh, it's slightly under 17 inches long uh, support beam. It's a one and a half by two and a half. And that's going to add some support for the center. Um, you can get that board in an eight foot section, eight foot length at Home Depot for like $1.87, I believe it is. Um, just uh, sand it down a little bit, make sure that it's not, it doesn't have any, um, it's, you don't want it to be rough. You don't want your animal to go ahead and... Uh, Eventually, even if after it's painted, you don't want anything sticking up. You just want it to be nice and smooth so it doesn't get any wood caught in itself or anything like that. So, we're going to start coating this. All right. So, now that I've attached the top plate, I need to create the bottom plate. And if you can see that there, it's maybe a little blurry. Hopefully, that'll adjust some. It's about an inch and a half distance between the edge of the bottom plate and where the plexiglass will be at when it's maximum at its maximum lift so 
roughly roughly saying maybe about an inch and a half so you want to cut just under an inch and a half maybe an eighth under uh, maybe a quarter under just so that when you because the glass is going to be sliding on this part like this it's going to be and when you take it out you need to lift it up and be able to lift it out and take it all the way out so that's the maximum we're going to want on this bottom part all right so i got the bottom part installed I got two pieces of plexiglass in here so you can see how this works. It butts up to the edge. Well, actually, you can't really see how it works, right? Because this is not going to slide at this angle. Well, we'll check that out another time. But anyways, you can see the edge here. This is what I really want to show you. Is that it will clear it just enough to go ahead and pull this piece out. And that's about, I'd say maybe a fourth, not even a, sorry, a fourth of an inch, that's less than a fourth of an inch and a little bit more than an, an eighth. So, I mean, someone's gonna get technical and try to give the number, but that's fine. Um, as long as it works and it holds. If you notice the bottom of the board underneath this is longer, that's also in case you get pissed or whatever else, you just wanna make sure that it doesn't pour out, come out into the track. And with this added piece here, it won't. If you want to make this one longer, I suggest you get the, the glass, instead of having it cut to 17 inches in height, I believe, or 16 inches, take it down a half inch, and then you can bring this one up a half inch. Um, but basically, that's the way that'll work. I like it this way. And so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna install, I'm gonna add the plates here. This one's gonna be a little bit thicker. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna go from this side to this side, it's gonna attach the top to the bottom. And it will also, because as you know, plexiglass will kind of bend a little bit. Not enough for your animal to get out, but if you got a strong one, this is an eight foot by three foot enclosure. They're pretty strong enough to push this out. This plate here is going to fasten it so it won't bend. And when you attach the lock here, it's going to join this kind of like a, like, almost like a solid piece. Not exactly, but because you have the top lip and the bottom lip holding it in place and the two sides... Uh, it'll be very difficult for your animal to bend or move. All right. All right. So these have been cut both sides and put into place. They are not screwed down at the moment. Um, I would want to say this is three and three quarter inches uh, wide. Uh, the length, of course, you can just figure that one on your own. Um, and as long as it fits in here nice and snug, um, there's no screws and it's holding it perfectly in place. Um, that's what you want. Um, I would not make this any thinner than three inches because this, like I said, this is what's going to help hold it in place. Um, if the snake decided to start pushing for any reason and wanted to push this glass out, um, this plexiglass, this is the area where it would bend on these edges and this is going to keep that from happening. Um, so three and three quarter inch and we're going to go ahead and attach these. Thank you. Face plate is on, and I've puttied and sanded the holes. So, overall, it's looking pretty good. Getting closer to that final uh, paint job, any touch ups on the inside, and so on and so forth. We're going to need some on the inside. Especially right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm just about ready to get painted. All right, so I've coated the outside. This is actually the second coat, and it is in the process of drying. I got a retouch of those areas that got touched by the black uh, little roller. They use a smooth uh, roller on this. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. The cage is actually flipped upside down right now. And this is how I make my heating element because I like ceramic heat bulbs, so I'm using two nanos. And I like that these raise the ambient air temperature extremely well. And so I add these two in. I have a little bit of that reflective uh, tape there. Um, now, mind you that 
underneath the ceramic uh, lamp holder, this dealie right here, that um, there is no tape. It's cut around. So, because this tape will conduct electricity if it is touching that. Um, so there is no tape in that area. And so what I'm going to do now is I'll build a box that goes around this all the way around. Same reflective inside. And it'll have a screen top. So if I ever need to change a bulb, I can just go ahead and open up the lid and switch a bulb out, put the lid back on, and it'll be fine. The top will have a screen top that'll go right above this. This is about three and a half inches off from the, from the top of the cage. And so I'll make it just a little bit over it. And... It'll create a great healing element. Works very well. I've been doing this for years now, so this is an extra extra added bonus if you want to do yours. Um, you can use radiant heat panels. You can use whatever you like, but um, this is just my preferred method because I like um, I like to make sure that the air is warm. If you ever have a snake that's pushing or you feel it's sick and you want to uh, increase the heat in order to um, help it heal, well. I can increase this a little bit and the air gets warm all the way through so it does activate um, its uh, own natural immunity is a little bit better. So we got the light installed. That, that is an option together. Shelf. It's a, The width is about 18 inches so it's like a foot and a half. Um, and the three legs there are from what's left over the center back of the center post there support. Um, they're about six and a half inches in length uh total well it's kind of hard to explain because i didn't really if you look underneath that those extra pieces of plywood there are pieces that i used to attach the board because it's kind of split down the center there if you can see not the center but that's about another six inches and i'm going to use poly board over that the same as this bottom here so in case the snake decides to poop or pee up there I can go ahead and take this off this is removable um, those brackets right there and it just slides right into those three and I go ahead and I am um, from there I just lift it up and it'll pull right out and get the light installed and you already saw the heating element the glass will be in soon enough I'm laying any of the touch-ups that I've done uh, go ahead and dry up at the moment. But pretty much, um, we're just about complete. All right, so I got the glass installed. Um, I still need to add the vent. I haven't added it in. Um, I'll probably put it somewhere under the shelf because I like for the heat on whatever the heat, wherever the heat is, I like, to, I like the heat to move over and have to carry itself over to one, the other side. So since heat rises, I like to put it on the I'll like to put it on the lower left. That way the heat will have to carry through the whole enclosure before it actually goes out. And of course, I won't do it all the way to the end cuz you want to allow the animal to thermoregulate. So probably right under the first uh, leg of the of the shelf. And that should keep the cool side still about I'd say about 78 degrees. Again, the heated box up there is an option. Polyboard is an option. You don't have to do that. And the shelf is also an option. That just gives your animals something else to perch up on if they want. Um, you know, just maybe a little exercise up and down, move, whatever. Better than just a flat board, um, just in my opinion. And uh, these doors move fairly easily. And they come out just as easy. All you do is just lift them up and pull the bottom out and the bottom will come right out. All right. Thank you for watching. This is Glorious Predators. My name's Joe. And if you don't mind and this helped you out, please hit the like button. All right. Thank you.